Hey guys and welcome to another Emedio Compositions tutorial. Now this is the 12th tutorial in the first steps in preparation series and this time we're going to take a look at the world properties, okay? So as a short overview you can um, with those settings here you can actually create a background and you can also um, set how much ambient light your, obje your objects are supposed to reach uh, to receive okay and then we've got like ambient occlusion environment lighting and indirect lighting a few ways to enhance the lighting of your objects then we have gather which is kind of the method how those three options work how they are calculated with uh, either ray trace or approximate then we've got mist and then we've got stars okay so yeah let's just minimize all the tabs we don't need just now and let's start with those. And by the way, the preview is just kind of how the background is going to look once it's rendered. It's just approximately true. It's not, you cannot really take it one to one, but yeah, more about that in just a second. Okay, so <clears throat> if we render this right now, you can see it's just a plain cube and that's perfect. Now, you can see here horizon color, zenith color and ambient color, okay? And horizon color and zenith color, they actually influence the way your background appears, okay? So if you change the horizon color to, let's say, something brighter, something like there, and let's make it slightly bluish because it's the horizon. Actually, let's make it completely white and slightly bluish like this. You can see the background is now um, blue. Perfect. Now, in order to create an actual horizon, we need to do a few other, other things, okay? And the second thing is zenith color. Now, if we change that to, say, something yellowish, like, like the sun, you can see um, it doesn't really change anything, okay? And that's because of those buttons up here. So you have Paper Sky, which kind of um, flattens all the texture coordinates so they, they actually fit um, into the rendered um, area, okay? We'll take a look at that in just a second. And then we've got Blend Sky. And if you check Blend Sky, then it actually creates kind of a gradient effect from the borders of your camera to the center. So if I just do that, you can see if I render this now, you get this gradient. And this gradient can be used just as a background image, or it can also be used to simulate that gradient effect that, get, that you get in the sky when you have like a sun up high and then, yeah. Uh, the sky closer to the sun is like brighter than the sky further away. Uh, that doesn't really sound physically correct, but I'm sure you know what I mean. But right now you can see we're looking onto the cube and we have kind of like this gradient effect over here. Now if we rotate our camera, by the way, I just made it so it rotates around the center of the cube with uh, pressing period on your keyboard or by selecting 3D cursor down here. And now we can just rotated it somewhat like this and now if you have 12 you can see um, we get the exact same gradient effect going on right here and you can see in from this perspective it looks more or less acceptable because the sun is indeed above the cube now um, but as you can see this doesn't really work for all cases okay so what you need to do to get actually a realistic sky is who would have thought you need to check real sky and you can see now you get a like, kind of a double gradient okay now if we render this you can kind of see like nothing okay and that's because this gradient is now spread over your whole world okay so if we go to control 7 now we look and 5 on your numpad so it's actually orthographic now we look um at the cube from below now if we hit a control alt 0 we're looking exactly um um at the hemisphere so to say at the senate so now if we have 12 you can see it's only this yellow color here and that's because um yeah we're looking straight up now if we go to seven and if we control alt zero you can see the same thing same things going on okay and now to illustrate that let's just um add a sphere and scale that up and let's go to wire okay now you can imagine it like this um, 
This part is completely yellow, and this part completely yellow as well, and this, like the equator, or whatever that's called in English, is like completely blue. And then here you got like this gradient effect going on. And dependent on where you face with your camera, um, a different part of that um, background is rendered. And that's what the real sky is. Now, um, it also considers angles. So for example, if we just delete this sphere again, because, or let's just move the sphere to a second, to the second layer, so it's out of our way. Now if we go like from this angle, control alt zero, and let's just with G and middle mouse, you just scroll out a little like this. If we have 12, you can see it starts to be a little bit yellowish down here, but up here it's completely blue because this face is pretty just just about pretty much the equator. So um, yeah. Now, if you don't want, if you um, want your, uh, if you want Blender to consider the angle of the camera. Um, so whether it's like this or like this, this kind of rotation, but you don't want it to consider um, whether it faces a point on the lower end of this uh, so-called sp uh, thought sphere or on the upper end, then just hit paper sky, okay? And now you can see you've got the gradient. I'm going from 100% yellow to 100% blue to 100% yellow, all within the camera range, okay? But if you rotate it, you can see it considers um, the angle, okay? Um, yeah, so that's how you can set up a very easy and fast background with only those few options there. So, uh, and now if you have like, I don't know, a sunset scene, you make it slightly more reddish and the blue maybe, maybe slightly darker or actually just slightly, slightly bluer. You don't really want it to be dark. And now if you have 12, you can see that's what you get. Now, of course, this is not a very realistic sky because you have no kind of, kind of no clouds. You don't have a real sun and stuff, but it's good as a beginning if you just want to kind of test render like this cube and you don't want it to be um, completely uh, gray or completely pitch black background. Now, the next thing is, as you can see, is ambient color. Now, if we change that to, like, say, completely red so you can see it well, the cube appears red, although it isn't. And that's just like um, a, an overall color correction you can do with um, ambient color. It's kind of like an ambient light that is cast over everything, okay? And uh, of course this is way too strong, but maybe if since this is um, like a sunset scene, you may want it to be slightly orangish reddish, something like this. And you can see it kind of starts to fit the background, although it's way too overblown. Now let's just... Um, Make it way darker to something around there, maybe. See what that does. Okay, that's much better. And what you can also notice, even the, the black areas are no longer really black. And that's kind of important because, um, yeah, it can mess up your scene uh, big time. Now, down here you can change exposure and the range. Okay, so exposure kind of describes how, how bright that ambient color is. So if you go all the way up to one, you can see um, those faces that are actually lit by a lamp uh, appear now brighter than before. Now, the face um, uh, being in the dark, that is black anyway, will not be affected at all, okay? And the other thing you can do is this range, and that kind of decides the color range that is mapped to s from 0 to 1, okay? And that kind of just kind of means um, right now, um, if there's like, like no light effect in it, you, you have zero. And if it's like 100% affected, you get one. And if you change that to five, then it's still like zero corresponds with zero, but one is then five. And that way you can just add, uh, make the color more more um, apparent in a way. So if you, once again, if we, go, if we go back to red, okay. And if you change that to one and the exposure to zero, you can see that's what you get. Um, now it's kind of like the natural lighting of your lamp, okay? So no additional lighting. Now if you change it to one, you can see it appears much brighter. Uh, at least those faces are actually lit by, this, by the lamp. And if you change the range up to five, you can see um, it appears darker, although it's not really darker, but just the color is more 
apparent. It's got a stronger effect. And you can see it looks once again like this. And those are just a few um, settings to play with. And then one other thing um, that's quite important as well is that right now we've got like this very boring sky, okay? It works as like a preview render, but it's not really great. Now you can also work with textures or with uh, images, I should say. Okay, now um, in order to do that, let's just actually go to one. Let's just reposition our camera a little bit like this. Okay, we've got this scene right here. Let's just um, put ambient color back to black. And by the way, if it's black, then it's uh, ineffective because it cannot really um, do anything. Uh, let's put that back to one as well. So it's an exposure to zero. We don't need it. Cool. Now, um, let's go to the texture properties. Now, we did not yet cover the texture properties. So more on those in a future tutorial. But for now, let's just go there and let's just make sure that this blue ball, which is which stands for world, is checked. And this way you can actually change the textures that affect your um, your environment, your background, okay? If you have, like, the cube selected, okay, then if you're here, you can see there's also this option here for material textures, okay? We do not want to uh, work on material textures, but we want to work on environment textures or world textures, okay? And then if we... Let's just add a new texture and it's called clouds, it's like a standard texture. Let's not worry about the settings, you can see it's kind of pink, but that's okay. And now if we render this, you can see we get this kind of effect. Um, and if we just set that to be plain white, you can see, um, you now you, you kind of got, get, got, you now kind of have those those clouds and stuff going on, and it just looks just pretty cool. And yeah, and as you can see, um, that pink color isn't really uh, considered at all, okay? But if you go to, because right now it just influences the blend value, okay? So how is um, the Senate color and um, the Horizon color mixed together in a way, okay? And if you'd like to get, have this like as your background right now, it's okay. You can also just... Uh, more on that later, but you can also just in decrease the size, so you could like smaller clouds and stuff going on. You can see, doesn't look too bad. And then you could also, with other textures, kind of create um, areas where it's just blue or just white and so on to get a more random effect. Because right now it's very even. Uh, but yeah, as I said, as I said, more on that later. And if we now check horizon, then you can see it starts to become ugly because now this um, pink color is actually considered. So yeah, let's not do that. And now let's actually just delete this texture and let's add an image. Okay, so new. And just as a short overview, uh, when we're working with textures, you have like the type of texture. So this is like an ocean texture or voxel data, which is for cloud simulation, uh, not cloud simulation for, well, also cloud simulation or just smoke simulation. Voronoi kind of tries to imitate organic skin and, and so on and so forth. And we're going with image or movie, okay? Come on. And now you kind of have like a preview of how it's going to appear. Right now it's black because we did not yet choose um, an image. And then you can also um, change the colors here a little bit. But first of all, let's just open an image. Okay, now there are different kinds of background images or different kind of formats. And you can see those are called ang maps. And those are not very spectacular um, ang maps, but let's just choose this one. This is a bit bright. And then, now you can actually change the color of that a little bit. You can increase the brightness, or you can increase the contrast, or the saturation, and so on and so forth. Um, yeah, but let's not worry about that just now. More about this when covering the textures. And then we've got our image loaded. You have like the image, which is kind of like the data block, okay, uh, the way it is saved in Blender. And then assigned to that angmap 11jpg you have the actual path to your image. Now you can change that path to another image, and it will still be angmap 11jpg So pay attention if you want to load a new image, make sure you change it over here and not over here, because otherwise you can get uh, quite a chaos. And then for interlaced um, output or input, whatever, uh, not so important as well, never used that before. And then pre-multiply and color and pre-multiply is also something for us to cover in the texture um, tutorial in the future.
Now, under image sampling, you also have a few options. Let's not worry about them just now as well. Um, important is that you can easily flip the X and Y axis. Uh, in this case, not something we want to do because it's kind of all right the way it is already. And one other thing is also filter size. Okay, so the smaller your filter size, um, the sharper your texture becomes. But pay attention if you're making an animation and your filter size is too small, then everything starts flickering. So let's put that back to one. Okay, so also let's just, um, as I said, we're going to talk more about those settings in the texture tutorial. So let's uh, minimize image sampling and let's bring out image mapping. Okay, and that is also something that is not very important for um, environment or for, um, yeah, for environment maps or background images. Um, repeat is kind of how it is repeated. Um, is it just extended, so is it just stretched, so it actually fills the area specified, or is it clipped or repeated or whatever? Uh, more on that in the text tutorial as well. And this is just how, cause kind of how many times it is repeated. We want to leave it at one, of course, because we don't want the environment to repeat itself. Um, let's not worry about those as well. And then we have like mapping. And right now it is set to view, okay? so. I'm going to show you what that means in a second as well. Um, and then we have like the influence. So right now, as it, it this one as well, it just influenced the blend color. Okay, so if we go to F12, you get this kind of effect. And um, it's kind of cool because it already considers like the camera angle and stuff because we already have real sky and blend sky checked or just real sky and blend sky is for the blending thing. Now if we uncheck real sky, then you can see we get this kind of projection and it is, once again, unimportant. Your camera angle doesn't count anything at all. It's just, oh uh, yeah, it just look like, looks like this. Now, if we uncheck Blend Sky, you can see everything is just blue and nothing's shown at all. And that is because right now our, our um, background image does not actually influence the color of the horizon. It just influences the blend values, okay? So if you have Blend Sky, then you've got like this uh, this the skin color like thing and blue and according to the texture it is blended together so you get this you get the uh, impression it's actually an image here but it's just the image is just used to decide whether it's um, that that color or that color so it's not really what we want let's just uncheck blend sky for now but now under he over here we can actually check horizon and now if we have 12 you can see it looks just perfect um, but one thing to note is that now everything is kind of projected onto uh, the into in, on this area. So even if we, as I said before, if we rotate the camera, the same image is going to be displayed over and over again. Now, if you have it set to view over here, and then and you want you actually want a static background, okay? So you want just like one image filling out the whole camera um, um, area because right now, as you can see, um, it's this area is not completely displayed within this within this camera area, so to say. Uh, then you need to make sure that you have paper sky checked, and then um, the image gets like squashed and stretched until it actually fits your camera view. Okay, so yeah, if that's what you want, it's perfect. But of course, with our example over here, we do not want that. So let's just make sure we have um, instead of view, we have ang map checked. Okay. And now we have to uncheck Paper Sky. We have to check Real Sky. And now you can see it looks like this. And as you can see, um, the, the, the Ang map is a bit low resolution, but now we can actually go to, I don't know, go to 7. Control Alt 0 to position our camera. Let's just delete the cube, we don't need it right now. And now with F12, you can see we're looking onto the ocean. Um, and this is really great because now you have like a three-dimensional, or it's actually a two-dimensional background, but it interacts with your scene as if it were three-dimensional, okay? So we can position our camera somewhat like, I don't know, like this, for example. And now we're looking at that part of the image or over there, and it looks different every time, okay? Kind of similar... Um, to how it works with HDRI images in cycles. Pretty cool, of course, the quality of those ang maps is not quite as high 
and it's got a few other issues but more on those um, in a later tutorial now um, we've got that set up all right uh, one other thing that's quite important is those options here now if you want to have like a a background that in kind of interacts with your scene, then you want to choose either equirectangular or ang map. Okay, so in this case, um, it's an angular map, but there are other um, types of maps. So if we just go to um, over here and then we go to, I think, projects, let me just see. Yeah, here we got one. Now, this is a different image, as you can see. Let me just open it in. Um, in here, just a second. Okay, here we go. And you can see this is one of those uh, panorama photographs. And you can also make it so that Blender maps this around your scene, so to say. The way you do that is quite uh, pretty much the same setup, just instead of ang map, you uh, choose equirectangular. And now you can see that's what you get. You can kind of move around um, within that space. And so on and so forth. Um, yeah, one other thing to notice that if you want to actually use this as a background image, you can see you need very high resolution images to actually work. Now the image right now that I'm using has 3000 by 1500 pixels, which is actually quite big, but it's far by far not enough. Um, and that's kind of that's kind of the problem here. Now, if we go, uh, I'm just just gonna show you or tell you how big the resolution of the other image was. Um, just a second here. It was five thousand by five thousand pixels, okay, and it was still quite quite resol low resolution. Now, as you can see, it is quite quite tough to find appropriate images unless you have like the equipment to make them yourself now I don't and yeah that's kind of a problem sometimes but if you want to use them just to generate reflections okay for that they are perfect they're absolutely perfect okay now um, there's something else to cover over here well there's one thing um, right now you can see this um, um, sort of this this image kind of influences the horizon and the blend. Okay, so if we go back to uh, the world settings and we check blend, um, and we set this like a darkish red, so it's really strong. Then you can see if we render this just now, you can see um, the red doesn't affect everything the same. Okay, and that's just because um, the whether it's red or not red, it's affected by this uh, this image. So the whiter this image, the brighter, the more affection. And you can see here where those outblown um, images are, are overblown or just very bright. There it's very red and the rest is less affected. Now that, not, that's certainly not what you want. So if this is like a sky texture and you want to uncheck blend, so it actually affects everything in an even way, okay, like this. Um, or what you can also do, um, you can get a separate texture ju that just influences your senate um, up and down, or just the upper senate and the, the, the lower senate. If you check those two, you can see nothing will happen because right now uh, the senate is at the exact same point as before, but as a color, the senate uses this texture, and because it's the same as the um, horizon, you don't see a difference. Okay, but we could, for example, um, uncheck horizon, okay, and uncheck blend or let's let's check blend for now and if you have 12 you can see you get this kind of effect um, and if we also uncheck blend let's just see you get this kind of effect okay so you can see this blending value and the color of the blend is now instead of red as before it's now the color of your um, image and therefore it looks very weird um, anyway let's just set that back to the way it was before Uh, something like this. Okay. Now. Um, yeah, one thing to note, and that's a bit of a problem, the ambient color cannot be affected by your texture. Okay, so even if you have like this perfect texture and everything going on, even if you now check ambient, um, if you change the ambient color, 
it will still just be red or blue or green or whatever you set here so it doesn't really fit um it doesn't really fit your your scene so to say okay so um thank you for watching i hope you've learned something um, in the next tutorial, we're going to talk about ambient occlusion, indirect lighting, and environment lighting. Or I'm actually not quite in that order, but anyway. Um, yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.